Uh, I'm Jeremy Howard and I'm from FastAI. My name is uh, Marcos Campos, I work for Bonsai AI. I'm Andy Steinbeck, I work for NVIDIA Corporation and uh, I'm a senior director in our business development organization looking after uh, the financial services vertical. It's very hard to predict five to ten years in the future when something's moving this fast. My perspective, AI has a tremendous value and potential as a tool to complement and expand human potential. Right. So we can apply that you now in medicine. We can apply that in you know, industry. There's tremendous potential in industry, which is a uh, with you now automation processes, now different type of manufacturing, um, also as uh, improving solving very hard problems. AI is so good at extracting uh, knowledge from big data that uh, the, the better question is, in a sense, where don't we see it applying? It it seems to apply to almost every vertical in, in across a range of businesses and also in the public sector in areas like medicine. There's no industry that's not going to be transformed um, at least as much as the internet transformed every industry. It's actually really hard to predict what those transformations are going to look like. I mean, even though I was confident in the early 90s that the internet was going to transform every industry, I couldn't have predicted exactly that Uber would come along or that Amazon would come along. AI has the potential of facilitating coming up with proposals or suggestions that can then be used by decision makers as a way to, uh, as alternatives. Problems that were too big and complex to ever tackle before and now they can be tackled. So now AI is not going to be some sub-department in the computer science department. It's really going to be a whole new a discipline in, in a big university, it'll be like the department of chemistry or physics or geology or math. I would say that there's sort of a two-pronged strategy. If you're, if you're a big enterprise, a Fortune 1000 company or a very large enterprise that's established, typically you have one extremely valuable asset. You have big data and you have an incumbent market. There's a really common theme you hear, which is that there's not enough uh, machine learning experts to go around. And that seems to lead people to kind of assume that they can't do anything about that or that they need to pay a million dollars to some new Stanford graduate. Um, I think that's totally the wrong way to think about it. Uh, you need to upskill your own people to understand, um, particularly to understand deep learning. Typically, a lot of the big companies have data science teams. They might be anywhere between a dozen people to several hundred people in, in some of the bigger companies. So you establish a team and they can act as advisors. And usually the companies have internal brainstorming sessions with their business leaders, their business lines, to say, here's what AI could do for your, for your business line. And then you can sort of have a top-down strategy a little bit of a bottom-up strategy where you've established your data science team, they start to establish the big data infrastructure on how you're going to marry the possible to those business applications. I would say that today, I think that the most popular that we see is yes, drones that can fly unguided. I'm most excited by medical applications um, because that's where the need is the greatest. Um, so I uh, previously started a company called Analytic, which was the first company to uh, apply deep learning to medicine. And I just kept going, wow, every time. This adaptation, this ability to learn from data and become adaptable, I think what's fascinating me at the potential of the technology.